All right, now Byron Tony Ranta is standing by with sports news. Thank you, Ijoma, and welcome to Sports News. The Lagos State Government says plans are underway to replace the artificial turf of the Teslin Balogun Stadium, Surulere, and the Campus Square Mini Stadium, Lagos Island, with natural grass. This is in preparation for the facilities to meet the required standard to host the Confederation of African Football CAF matches. The chairman of the Lagos State Sports Commission, Kweku Tando, said the development is geared towards providing world class sporting facilities. Tando also confirmed the Mobalaji Johnson Sports Center, Royal Park, Yaba, Agiga State. Stadium and the Shiri Mini Stadium will also be upgraded. Tunisia coach Nabil Malul has recalled five players to his preliminary 29-man squad for the 2018 FIFA World Cup. Long-term absences: Mohamed Larbi, Karim Laribi, Saber Khalifa, and Ahmed Akaichi will all feature. As does Scotland-based Bilal Moshi, who last played for the Tunisia at the 2016 World Cup in Germany. Former France Youth International Sadifin Kalui, Elise Shikri and Moise Hassan are also on the list having pledged their futures to the Carthage Eagles. And Germany's first choice goalkeeper Manuel Neuer has been included in the preliminary World Cup squad despite having been out of action since September but the World Cup final scorer Mario Gote was left out. The 32-year-old nurse suffered a broken bone in his foot and only returned to training days ago. Bergeni coach Joachim Lowe had decided to take four keepers into the training camp in the Italian Alps from May the 23rd to June the 5th. Lowe left out midfielder Gota, who scored the winning goal in the final against Argentina four years ago, but has had a lackluster season since. Fellow Borussia Dortmund player Marco Rios, hopes of making his first World Cup, got a boost after he made the cut. And away from the World Cup, Lyon is preparing to host a Europa League final, which will take place tomorrow, May the 16th, between Atletico Madrid and Olympique Marseille. The Spanish side with a wealth of Champions League experience are our favourites, but Marseille will have the advantage of playing in France. A large security presence is expected on the day of the final as thousands of fans from Marseille arrive in the city. Motorsports now and both Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes insist a new contract is not far away and has only been delayed in order to let the team focus on its on-track issues last month. Hamilton was expected to put pen to paper on a new deal at the start of the season, but as of the fifth round of the championship, nothing has been announced. His existing contract expires at the end of this season, but he's expected to extend his deal for at least one more year with the reigning four-time world champions. After meeting with board members from Mercedes' parent company, Daimler, over the Grand Prix next weekend, Hamilton insisted the deal will be signed in the near future. And finally, 10 athletes and a coach who went missing during the 2018 Commonwealth Games faced deportation from Australia. The group includes eight athletes from Cameroon, two from Uganda, and a, para, a Rwandan para powerlifting coach. Australia's Home Affairs Minister, Peter Dutton, confirms the athletes will be in Australia illegally from midnight today, when the visas expire. The eight Cameroon athletes, three weightlifters, and five boxers comprise a third of their 24-man athlete delegation. And with that, we end on sports for tonight. I'm Barum, Tony Iranta, and Ijama Uba. <laughs>
It's the bloodiest single day for Palestinians since 2014, with 58 protesters killed and 2,700 injured by live gunfire, tear gas or other means. The bloodshed drew calls for restraint from some countries, including France and Britain, and stronger criticism from others, with regional power, Turkey, calling it a massacre. Israel is a terrorist state, and the steps they are taking now prove that they are a terrorist state. Unfortunately, the United States are mercilessly cooperating with Israel, just like they collaborated with PYD and YPG. And it is not the first time Israel has carried out a genocide. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Liu Kang says the Chinese government expresses serious concerns about the situation in Gaza and urged all relevant parties, especially Israel, to exercise restraint. The Kremlin also urged countries, especially those in the Middle East, called heads of mediators, to avoid action that might inflame tensions in the region. The UN Human Rights Office condemned what it calls the appalling, deadly violence by Israeli security forces in Gaza and calls for an independent investigation. There are fears of further bloodshed impending as Palestinians undertake a further protest to mark the Nakba or catastrophe today. It's a day Palestinians lament the creation of Israel when hundreds of thousands of Palestinians fled or were driven from their homes in violence, culminating in a war between the newly created Jewish state and its Arab neighbors in 1948. And the main news again. President Mohammed Buhari today denied claims of a witch hunt in his administration's fight against corruption. He also challenged the legislature of new laws to give bite to the anti-corruption crusade. Also today, Saka came the way of communities ravaged by herdsmen attacks in Benue and other states as the federal government earmarked 10 billion naira for reconstruction efforts. And Israel came under international condemnation today over the Gaza violence deaths as Palestinian and Israeli envoys to the UN disagree over the situation. Well, that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks a lot for staying with us. I'm Ijoma Oyato. Do have a good night.